Close your eyes and bring your attention into the breath. We spend our days spending so much attention outside that what's going on inside of us becomes a mystery. The things that are closest to us, the breath, our intentions, are often a big blank space. Sometimes you ask someone why they did something, they have to stop and think for a bit, which shows that they weren't really there when the intention was established, which is a real shame because, after all, it's our actions that create our lives. So look in very close. Watch the breath. Be very sensitive to how the mind is talking to itself about the breath. If it's talking about something else, just keep bringing the conversation back here. The breath is going in, you want to know it's going in. If it's going out, you want to know it's going out. You also want to know whether it's comfortable, whether it feels good for the body. Energizing when you're feeling tired, relaxing when you're feeling tense, bringing things into balance. That's the kind of breathing you want. And is that the kind of breathing you have? Take, a, take some time to look at it. This is one of the big ironies in life, is that there are a lot of really good things that are right near us. The way we breathe, the way we form our intentions, which can do so much to make life a lot better. And we're more interested in things outside. So bring your attention in. When the Buddha says that our suffering comes from within, don't look at it as, as his laying blame on us. He's pointing out an opportunity. We can change our ways. Our happiness is in our power if we take advantage of the things that we otherwise tend to overlook. So take some time every day, every day, to be familiar with what's going on inside the mind, inside the body, through the breath. The breath is the ideal place to be because it's your anchor in the present moment. When you're with the breath, you know you're in the present moment because there's no future breath you could watch or no past breath you could watch. And when you're in the present moment, you can see where your intentions are being formed and how they're being formed, and whether they're being formed well or not. And if they're not being formed well, you can, you can change them. You have that power. Another big irony is that we're often taught, the Buddha taught us to accept, accept, accept things as they are. But we accept the things the way things work, but we don't accept them as they are. The way things work is that there are certain patterns of cause and effect, but then you can change those causes to get better effects. In fact, that's what the whole teaching is all about. Instead of using your views and your words and your deeds to create suffering, you can use them to bring about an end of suffering, so you can change your ways. And it's important that you learn how to make use of your knowledge of cause and effect to get the results you want. So we're not here just to accept. There are some things we have to accept, but there are other things that are within our power to change. It would be a real shame if we don't take advantage of that power. The Buddha is pointing out exactly where it is, so we look inside to see where we can make a difference.